worship team. What an awesome experience of worship we had this morning. Yeah, give him a hand. Not just him, but God. Give God a hand. I'm Pastor Grant. I'm going to open up with Mark 4, 1 through 20, uh, before Pastor Don comes and gives us this message. Once again, Jesus began teaching by the lake shore. A very large crowd soon gathered around him. So he got into the boat. Then he sat in the boat while the other people remained on the shore. He taught them by telling many stories in the form of parables, such as this one. Listen, a farmer went out to plant some seed. As he scattered it across the field, some of the seed fell on a footpath, and the birds came and ate it. Other seed fell on a shallow soil with underlying rock. The seed sprouted quickly because the soil was so shallow. But the plant soon withered under the hot sun, and since it didn't have deep roots, it died. Other seed fell among thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plant, so they produced no grain. Still other seeds fell on fertile soil, and they sprouted, grew, and produced a crop that was 30, 60, and 100 times as much as had been planted. And then he said, anyone who with ears to hear, should listen and understand. Now later, when Jesus was alone with his 12 disciples and with the others who had gathered around, they asked him what the parable meant. He, he replied, you are permitted to understand the secret of the kingdom of God, but I use parables for everyone, I say to outside, everything I say to outsiders, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. When they see what I do, they will learn nothing. When they hear what I say, they will not understand. Otherwise, they will turn to me and be forgiven. Then Jesus said to them, If you cannot understand the meaning of the parable, how will you understand all the other parables? The farmer plants seed by taking God's word to others. The seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message, only to have Satan come at once and take it away. The seed on the rocky soil represents those who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy. But since they don't have a deep root, they don't last long. They fall away as soon as they have problems or are persecuted for believing God's word. The seed that fell among the thorns represents others who hear God's word, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the worries of the life, the lure of the wealth, and the desires of other things, so no fruit is produced. And the seed that fell in the good soil represents those who hear and accept God's word and produce a harvest of 30, 60, and 100 times as much as has been planted. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the word of God. I thank you that you give us this parable and how Don is going to unpack it for us. Lord, I pray that our soil and our souls would be fertile and ready for the message of the word of God that Don is going to preach, that we would be ready to receive the, the word of God in our hearts today, that the message that he's going to present to us that you have given him would hit us in such a way that it would change our life that we would see 30, 60, and 100 times fold a reward because of the message this morning. Lord, I thank you for the gathering. I thank you for the people that, have sh that are here and, and that are here to worship you and praise you and honor you. Lord, I thank you that we can come freely in this place. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. There he is. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is good. Give him a praise offering. Well, we thank God for his word, the holy scriptures that he's given to us. And this parable is actually talking about God's word and the receptiveness of our hearts. Talk to somebody who is here today who had a angiogram and uh, talk to them about how that went. Perhaps today the Lord is going to do like a spiritual angiogram in our lives as we look at this parable. I've heard that there are such people who are called master gardeners. Do we have any master gardeners here today? Well, I want you to know that I'm not one of those. If you come to my place, it'll appear that I'm growing organic dandelions and thistles for your salad. I am not. And when I try to seed my lawn, I think a tweet goes out and every bird in Marshall comes over and snatches all of that seed. And I can tell you that when I plant my seed, that the package says 
guaranteed weed free. They lie. That is not true. I have two hobbies in life. One is rehabbing from surgeries, and the other one is desperately trying to grow grass. But I did grow up on a farm, so I understand a little bit about what Jesus is talking about in the parable of the soils. The seed in this story, Jesus tells us, represents the Word of God. And the Word of God is needed in our lives. But the condition of our heart is actually the soil. So this would have been a familiar picture to people. They used broadcast uh, planting. In those days, the uh, Israelite would have had a bag around their shoulder with seed in it. And as they walked, they would have flung it out. Like if your older farmer here, you maybe remember the broadcast spreaders that would sling the seed out. That's what's going on here. But the seed landed on soil. So it's the condition of the soils that Jesus is concerned about. And I want to contend that the reason that some people don't respond to Jesus' message, his love and his passion for you to bring you to him and to change your life, is not because of the ineffectiveness of God's word. It has to do with the condition of our soil, the soil of our heart. Now, the first soil represents a person with a hard heart. When I was on mission in Russia, I had a translator who told me ahead of time that she was not a Christian and she had no desire to become a Christian. She was there to translate for pay, and that was it. I said, that's fine. I'm, I understand. So we were in an auditorium with a crowd, and I preached this very passage from Mark chapter 4. And she stood beside me, and I would do a sentence. She would translate a sentence. And I said, the first soil represents a person with a hard heart. And she didn't say anything. And I, so when that happens, if you've ever done a mission trip, what the American thinks you need to do is to talk louder and slower, like that was going to help. The first soil represents a person with a hard heart. You're taught to look at the audience and not the translator, so I was waiting, and she didn't say anything. So I turned. She was a little shorter than me, and she's looking up at me, and she has tears coming down her cheeks, and she was saying over and over in English, a hard heart, a hard heart. And she got up, and she ran out of the auditorium as fast as she could. We had to get another uh, translator to complete the message. She is illustrating this first soil that Jesus is talking about. He grieves over us when we are like this. This is a person with a hard heart. The beaten paths represent that. When I grew up on a farm, we had to uh, go get the cattle. We milked them twice a day, and there's this greenway pasture. But there was a path to the cows that didn't have anything on it but dirt. Because they took the same path, following single file, all the way in, all the way out, twice a day. Nothing could grow on that path. It was hard as a rock. And so it is in Palestine that they have paths, and they're traveled over by men, women, children, animals, and those paths become rock hard. And if you try to throw any seed there, absolutely nothing is going to grow. The first soil represents a person with a hard heart. So God is speaking to all of us, including the speaker. What is going on in your life today? Do you have a hard heart? Some people will say, I'm not letting that person in. You're giving your son the silent treatment. Your wife might say, don't touch me. See, some things happen in our life that can move us to develop a hard heart towards God still loves us, his word's still powerful, he still seeks us, but we're like, shut off. We do not want him to come into our heart. We don't want God. We don't want his word. Nobody's going to get close to me. And that might seem a safe place for you, but the problem is that is a very lonely life because the God of love, the God of the Bible, wants to change your life. He wants to penetrate that hard heart. So what does a person who has a hard heart need to do? Well, in Jeremiah chapter 4, we read, Thus says the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, Break up your fallow ground. And so we need to break up that hard soil. 
We need to become humble. Before the days of Roundup, we had to till our fields. And even today, when you plant your garden, you might get a rototiller out there, and you chew it all up, and you do that on purpose so that those seeds might actually grow. And so God is here today. His word is true in your life today, but it might be falling on hard soil. So we need to pray that God would help us to break up that soil, to break up that hard ground, to have our hearts soften so that this word that's coming to us from the Lord can take root in our lives. So you may be here today with a hard heart. And you may be shaking your fist at God. You might actually be sitting next to somebody who dragged you here today and you didn't want to come at all. But here you are. And inside you're kind of like, mm, towards spiritual things. I want you to know today that the living God loves you incredibly, beyond your wildest imagination. And he wants to minister to you and change your life from the inside out. But he's got to get there. And so allow your heart to become soft again. There are other dangers hindering us today. The second soil represents the shallow heart. These are the ones who hear it. They take off really good, and then the sun comes out, and it's really dry like it's been in Marshall these past days. And if it's like my lawn, uh, it's, it withers. It's brown. It's not like this green. It's not even like this in the middle path. My lawn's like white. might even be dead. And that's because it doesn't have any roots, and it doesn't because in our lawn, if you go down an inch or so, it's clay. So the roots have a very hard time getting down. These are people who start out great. Maybe a big crusade or a Christian concert or some event at church or WANA or vacation Bible school or church camp, and you go forward and you're like, I'm going to become a Christian. But you don't have any roots. And the problem is... The sun comes upon everyone's life, and there's trials. Someone got sick or died, or there was an accident. There was maybe bad news that came from the doctor, an overdraft notice perhaps, or she broke up with you. Somebody really hurt you, and you come to that breaking point. This can happen when our faith has not developed roots. Same is true in Israel. They had a veneer soil and underneath is absolute bedrock so if, if they're trying to grow in that place you can be sure that it's going to pop up look good and then when the heat comes it's gone so i don't know if that's you today we've talked about the hard heart maybe you're the shallow heart popped up look good but then the trials come as they will to all of us the heat of life and you've withered and you're peeling over very disappointed with the Christian faith. We need to realize that authentic faith is not driven by the caboose of feelings. You and I need to grow deep in God's word. We're very busy people. And for a lot of us, the word of God has become kind of something that collects dust on the table there in the living room for people to see that I'm a Christian. People ask you, are you a Christian? Yeah. Yeah. I was at that crusade. I went forward. I accepted Christ. But you know in your life, if things aren't going so well. It's because it's shallow. Several years ago, Marshall had a big storm. And a gal that was attending our church lived in Marshall at the time, Carrie Hansen. She had five pine trees that went down. We're over there with chainsaws trying to cut them out. Not too far away as an oak. Wasn't hurt at all. So I'm asking about that, and the, and the guy goes, well, these pines, they have, they have kind of a, a very shallow root system. It doesn't spread out like the oak. It doesn't go deep like the oak. So when the big winds come, the pine's going to snap off, and all of her pines snapped off, and we had to go over there and, and take them out. Every one of us wants to act like they got it together. I don't know if that's a cultural thing or not. Do you know today, if you're sitting here and somebody goes, how are you doing? You go, I'm good. And you know, inside, I'm not. See, we need men and women in our lives. We need one another. We need our churches. We need to work together so that we can go down deep in God's word and we can have roots in our life. That's what's needed in our lives is roots. The scriptures say in 2 Timothy 3, 12, indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. 
We're going to have a prayer time later. And one of the things we're going to pray for is the suffering in Afghanistan. I got an underground letter last week telling me about Christians dying in Afghanistan for their faith. You and I might be persecuted in our own ways. Might not be somebody trying to take your life, but it might be struggles in relationships or in your workplace or in your marriage. Trials come to all of us, and we need spiritual roots. The answer is to not quit your faith. It's to cling to the King, Jesus Christ, and let him take you deeper in faith. We need God's word. We need one another to develop roots in our Christian life. Now, perhaps you're not feeling like you're being very persecuted, but maybe the next soil you will connect with a little better. The third soil is the crowded heart, the distracted heart. He says, they're the ones who hear the word of God, but the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things enter in and choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. So you hear the word, you might be attending church even regularly, but then something happens. You know, when you're farming, you get to the end rows, and sometimes the spray can't get everything, and there's a few rows right in those corners or along the fence. And if you get that foxtail or lamb's quarter or ragweed growing there, you'll find that it's much taller than the corn. And if you happen to find a stalk of corn in there, you go and you look and you, you can't find the ear. It's this really little wimpy ear. It's because the weeds choked out the corn. So I want to ask you today, what is distracting you from Jesus? What is choking out your life? We need to get a hoe in our garden and dig out our weeds. And I think today that there might be some weeds in our lives that you and I need to dig out. Distractions that keep us from letting God's word sink into our lives and take root and bear fruit in our lives. Now, there could be a ton of weeds that are choking out our lives. But I find it interesting that Jesus, in telling this parable, mentions two biggies. One is worries. Literally, the word means things that distract us. So what is distracting you today from the Lord? And the second one is money, the lure of money that promises what it can't deliver. So if you want strong ears of corn, you get rid of the weeds. Now, we live, do we not, in a culture of distraction. My iPhone, iPad smartwatch, social media, news, politics. You can just take that list and keep going, but there's stuff constantly demanding our attention. We're constantly shifting our eyes, moving on. Advertisers that, that put commercials on TV know that they have to change this, the visual scenery. Every five seconds, it's got to change, change, change. And you and I are changing so rapidly. It's mind-boggling. And we just keep the chase going. And we may not realize it, but what the chase of that distraction is doing is it's choking something. It's choking your relationship with Jesus Christ. And so the call in this soil is to deal with the weeds. The distractions can wreck us. There was a young girl to which a man had proposed, and he said, Darling, I want you to know that I love you more than anything else in the world. I want you to marry me. I'm not rich. I don't have a yacht or Rolls Royce like Johnny Brown, but I do love you with all of my heart. And she thought for a moment and then replied, I love you with all my heart too. Could you tell me a little bit more about Johnny Brown? <laughs> Distractions. Take you off. There you go. Oh, I was going to start really getting into that Bible study. Distractions, take me off. There we go. Well, I was going to get up and, and read my Bible and talk to God. Distractions, oh, I got the news going on my phone. Can't do that now. So see, Jesus knew this many years ago, that distractions and worries are going to slowly or rapidly just take us away from the living God. 
If God were to tell you right now the number one distraction in your life keeping you from his word, what would that be? I want you to think about that. What would that be? The number one thing. See, God loves you beyond your wildest imagination. He wants to visit with you. He wants to talk with you. He wants to speak to you from the scriptures. And he wants a very close, intimate relationship with you. He wants to guide you each day. And he's waiting to hear from us. You know, let's, just, let's just let him speak to us right now. and Give us that one distraction. I think he so loves us that he actually baits us with the fourth soil. The fourth soil is the fruitful heart. Those who have sown in the good soil are the ones who hear the word and accept it and bear fruit 30, 60, and 100 fold. So this seed can get in there. When I was at Iowa State studying farming, they told us that when you plant a seed in the soil, you need to like pack it in there. So this is why on your planters, there's a little wheel behind every one of the, the droppers that actually pushes the soil against that seed. They call it seed soil contact. So when you plant your garden, you dig a little hole, you put the seeds in, and then you pat it. The padding is very important. Close seed soil contact will make for higher percentages of germination. So see, what Jesus is saying is that you and I need to have Seed, soil, contact, God's word, our hearts, close contact. And if we allow that, then we will in fact grow. He promises it. Now we have different people in this audience. Different things are going on in your life. Different levels of spiritual maturity. I think it was on purpose that Jesus wrote this the way he did. Because he could have easily just said, the good soil is a soil that bears a hundredfold. So you and I have to answer the question, why is it that Jesus said 30, 60, 100? I think it's because he's more interested in faithfulness and quality than he is in quantity. He wants you and I to be faithful to him. And he will yield the fruit in our lives that he desires for us to yield. And it might not be what you dreamt of or had in mind, but it's in the perfect will of God if you let him. You need that seed soil contact, and so do I. We need that in our lives. We need to fall in love with God. We need to humble ourselves afresh. If your heart's heart, I just plead with you. You know, maybe just think about what are you getting out of keeping your teeth clenched and your fist tight against God and against others? The person you're damaging is you. Soften your heart and let, let the Lord in. Connect with some other people here and start sending down some roots in your life so that when those trials come, you can cling to the Lord together and get through it. And then let's each look. What is that that's distracting us? You know, I make connections with other pastors and friends to make sure that I'm walking with God, that I'm living a holy life, that I'm faithful to my wife. You never outgrow this. Constantly working towards seed soil contact in your life. And then ask the Lord, what is the distraction in your life that he would have go? And he's here. He's here. Do you know that at the end of this service, there's going to be some people up here in the front and they're going to be here to pray with you. I think that God brought you here in purpose. And I think that he wants this message on the parable of the soils to touch each of our hearts in some way. There's four different kinds of soils here representing many things that are going on or could be going on in our lives. And the living God is here and he wants to speak to your heart and mine today. So I'm just asking you to pray with me right now as I close and we'll continue with our service. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word. Your word is true. You are a good, good God. You love everyone here. You know 
our whole lives, you know what's going on. You know even if we have a clenched fist at you, and you still love us anyway. You still come for us. You're still trying to chase us down. You know if we're running around with all this activity, even distracting ourselves so we won't have to like just draw near to you. We might be afraid of you. So I just want to pray today in Jesus' name that you would do that spiritual angiogram in our heart and reveal our condition because you want our very best. You want us free. You want us to grow in our faith. You want to deal with our hard heart. You want to come in. So I ask today, in the precious name of Jesus, that you would do your ministry in our hearts right now, individually, deeply, we might have that contact with you again. Renew our faith. Give us faith. Soften our hearts. Take us deeper. In Jesus' precious name, amen.